big news out of Proxmox Server Solutions with their surprise announcement of their alpha release of Proxmox Data Center Manager. Let's talk about it and I'll walk you through how to set it up. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here, Proxmox Server Solutions gave us an early Christmas gift, one that I wasn't expecting. The makers of PVE dropped an announcement of the alpha release of Proxmox Data Center Manager, a project they're developing that, in their words, has the objective of providing a centralized overview of all of your individual nodes and clusters. It also enables basic management like migrations of virtual guests without any cluster network requirements. Before we get into the installation and configuration, let me show you what this alpha looks like because believe me when I say this, folks, from the people like myself coming from VMware to the land of Proxmox, this really feels like PVE is getting a vCenter-like management system. This is the PDM dashboard. Right away, we get big clear cards providing you macro information about all of the systems, or remotes as they're called, that you've added to PDM. You've got a status card for all the added remotes, nodes, a card for running and stopped VMs, as well as a card of running and stopped LXC containers. Next, we have a giant card for subscription status, followed by a card showing you VMs with the highest CPU usage, a card with nodes with the highest CPU usage, and a card with nodes with the highest memory usage. All big, clear, easily readable KPIs. I love it. It gets better though. Over on the left, we have a giant note section for all of you note takers. Under configuration, we can see our time zone config and DNS config, which are currently uneditable, and network interface configuration that also allows you to create a bond or bridge via the create button. In the other tab at the top, we have the WebAuthn TFA settings section, which is also uneditable at this time, but hey, it's an alpha. We expect things to be a work in progress. Under access control, we have a user management section for adding additional users and the two-factor authentication tab for setting up 2FA. Under certificates, you can manage the certificates for PDM. By default, we see that we have just a self-signed certificate because that was generated when we installed PDM. You can also upload or delete a custom cert as well. Along the top, we have a section to set up Acme certs for Let's Encrypt if you want to leverage them for public certs. Moving on, under administration, we can keep track of updates and update PDM and the host. In repositories, you get a very familiar listing of all of the repos added to the host, as well as the ability to add more. Syslog gives you, you guessed it, the syslog of the box. And tasks shows you the tasks that have been run on the system as well. All of this looks very familiar to the same processes in PVE. Shell gives you shell access to the host running PDM, giving you the same easy access to the console that you can get inside of PVE as well. In remotes, we get a list of the collections of nodes and clusters you've added to PDM, and you can add more from the Add Proxmox VE button at the top. All right, this next part was the most exciting part for me. Let me show you what they're doing with the nodes. This, friends, is the dashboard for your added remote. Take it in, because it's beautiful. Let's start on the far right. On the right pane is detailed information about the specific node. We have the familiar statistics at the top, and below that, clean, clear, simple graphs about CPU usage, server load, and memory usage. In the middle pane, we have the macro details about the remote, which for me here is only a single host, but for those with clusters would provide cluster statistics. And below that, a clean, clear list of all of the workloads running on all the nodes, including their running state, tags, and the ability to stop, start, migrate, and open a window to manage the workload directly from the PVE GUI itself. Clicking on any workload in the list will give you details about it, including status, utilization states, and again, really clean, clear graphs on historical CPU and memory usage, network traffic, and IO stats. One last thing, they've even included two themes, desktop and crisp, both with various density settings, and of course, the ability to select between light mode, dynamic, and dark mode. Personally, I really love where this is going. The UI is fresh, and it's hard not to see where the future of this is heading. And for all of my ex-VMware users out there, tell me you're not getting vCenter vibes from this thing, right? Anyway, let's show you how quick it is to set this thing up. There are two ways to deploy PDM right now. You can download an ISO and spin up a VM of it, or you can do what I'm about to show you, which is build an LXC container and install PDM in it. The installation and setup of PDM is pretty quick and easy, but as always, your mileage may vary. Let's get to it. All right, this is my Proxmox host named Proxinator running PVE830. Our first stop here is to create an LXC container that will run PDM. To do this, we'll head up to create CT button at the top, give our container a host name, then a root password, and then click Next. Now we need to choose the LXC container template that will be the basis for our OS in the container. Proxmox says to run PDM on Debian Bookworm, so we'll select that template and click Next. All right, storage is next. A minimum of eight gigabytes or more is required, so we'll toss in 16 for good measure and click Next. 
CPU cores are next. The minimum CPU core count for PDM is two or more cores. So we'll provide four and click next. PDM requires at least two gigabytes of RAM. So in the spirit of continuing to double the minimums here, we'll provide four gigs of RAM to the container and click next. Now we need to provision out the network. The minimums only require a single NIC and it's your choice how you provision out your addressing. Because this is an alpha and we're testing it, I'm gonna provision out my PDM using DHCP. So my first step here is to select which network I wanna put the PDM container in. So I'll select my server net. And as previously mentioned, I'm gonna leave the container set to DHCP. So I'll swing up and select DHCP and you can feel free to set a static address if that better suits your infrastructure. Done here now, so let's click next. Next up is to configure DNS servers, which we'll leave alone here as they'll be provided from the DHCP server, but feel free to add DNS servers here if that better suits your setup. Now we'll hit next. Last page is just the summary page of everything we've previously configured. The last thing I like to do before we kick off creation is to click the checkbox to start the container after creation, and then we'll click finish. And done. Let's get to the next step. Now we see my newly created container in the left and we can see it's running, so let's click on it. Now let's head over to the console and get logged in using the root account and the password set during creation. The first step I like to do before doing anything else on a fresh install is to run an apt update and update all packages. I like to use this command, apt update, followed by two ampersands, then apt dist upgrade dash Y, followed by two ampersands, and apt auto remove dash Y, followed by another two ampersands, and apt auto clean dash Y, and finally, two more ampersands and reboot to finish it out. Now we'll hit enter to kick it off. All right, now that the container is back up and online, let's get logged in again with root and our password. Our first stop here is to add the PDM app repository to the container. Here's the command. Pause the video if you want to transcribe it, or you can find the command also in the PDM announcement, which we've linked in the video description as well. Once you've entered it, hit enter. The next command will download the release key since this is just a vanilla Debian installation. Once you've entered that, hit enter. Now we need to run an apt update to update our package repos on our container. The last command installs the main packages for PDM. Once you've entered it in, press enter, press Y to accept the package maintainer script, and off we go. Since my container is DHCP, I'll enter in IPA to obtain the current IP address of my container for accessing the PDM website. Now we're ready to move on to the second half, which is configuration. Now pop open a browser of your choice and in the address bar, type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, followed by the IP address of your container, then finish it with colon 8443, which is the port PDM is hosted on, then press enter. By default, PDM uses a self-signed certificate, so you'll be warned by your browser. Just accept that and move on. If you've done everything right, you should land on the login page for PDM. The default username is root, since that's the only user account on our container, and the password is the password we set when we built out the container. PDM also supports local users and login via PAM or PVE auths, but for the first time, PAM is the only valid option as there are no local accounts otherwise. All right, welcome to the PDM dashboard. It's very empty at the moment since we've not added any remotes to it yet, so let's get that final step done. So let's head over to remotes on the left and then to add Proxmox VE at the top. Okay, first step here is to enter in the hostname or IP address of your node or cluster. I'm gonna be adding a single node here, so I'll enter in the FQDN of my node. Next, PDM will only accept a self-signed certificate if you provide the fingerprint of the certificate on your PVE host. If you have a public or trusted cert on your PVE host, you don't need to do this extra step and can move on by clicking connect. However, I use a self-signed cert, so let's take care of that now. We can find our SSL certificate fingerprint quickly on our PVE host via the UI. So swing over to your PVE host, select your node on the left, then two certificates, and then over in the right window pane, double click on your cert used for your PVE host, typically named pve-ssl.pem. In the certificate details window, second from the top is our fingerprint. Copy that, and then let's head back over to PDM. Now paste the fingerprint data in, and then click connect. If all is good, you should see connection okay appear next to the connect button. Let's hit next. Now under settings, we need to provide details about the cluster or node we're adding to PDM. Remote ID is the name for the remote you're adding to PDM. I'm adding a single node, so I'll name this remote Proxinator. If you're adding a cluster, name it accordingly. Next stop is to enter in the user pass to authenticate against your node or cluster. I'm gonna use root, but feel free to use any account that has full privileges to your PVE infrastructure. My root account is a physical user on the PVE host, so I'll select PAM. But if you're using a user that only exists in PVE, select PVE. 
Leave the API token the same or change it to something you want, but the default is fine here. Now click scan. If you see scan OK, then we're good to head on. So let's click next. All right, under endpoints, you should see your nodes listed, including their host names and SSL fingerprints. You should see all of your nodes, but in case you don't, use the add button to add the additional nodes to this remote. Once you've completed that, click next. Last is summary. All of it looks good, so we'll click finish. Now let's head back up to dashboard at the top and we can see data filling into our cards. And if we head down to the remote we added, we should see data filling in. Looks good, we're done. Details like utilization graphs will take a bit of time to fill in, so don't be surprised if they stay blank for five minutes or so. If you're seeing data, PDM is working. All right, before we get into my final thoughts, let's talk about the PDM roadmap. There's a lot of really exciting stuff on the roadmap for PDM. Some of the highlights are enhanced health and resource overviews, simplified remote management and resource organization, core configuration management for updates, backups, and firewalls, SDN integration for intercluster eVPNs, remote virtual guest migration and manual disaster recovery, advanced search, UI improvements and error handling, and integrations with Proxmox backup server and mail gateway. All right, let's talk about this. If you've watched any of my videos about PVE, you know that I've been critical of the UI UX of Proxmox and boy oh boy does this feel like a big positive change in the right direction. It feels like they've come to recognize that a singular management plane was missing from PVE. Something like vCenter maybe? Anyway, this is clearly an alpha and doesn't really offer much more than a mere taste of the future to come for PDM, but man, am I excited. I know we have some very dedicated PVE users who watch these videos, and I'm really dying to know how you all feel about this. It feels to me like a huge step in the right direction to fill the hole left by VMware and vCenter, or at least for those users who've come from that world and would be more comfortable with that with PVE. So get down in the comments and tell me what you're thinking about PDM. Good or bad, I want to know. And lastly, I'll say it again, there's been so much change happening in 2024, and here we are, right before the end of 2024, seeing even more change in the virtualization space. It is such a fantastic thing to see happening in real time. Keep it up, Proxmox Server Solutions. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out this playlist of other virtualization videos we've done in the past? If you're looking for your next great hypervisor, we can help. <laughs>